Hello? Hi, Captain. Okay, so I've spoken to security, and they've started checking in, but there's at least 20 minutes to go before we can expect to start boarding. Thanks. No problem at all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Martin Wenzel. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are in Palau, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, just off of, just north of Papua New Guinea, uh, in Indonesia. We're going to be headed northeast up to Guam for our World Tour Flight 260, flying into uh, Antonio B. Juan Pat International Airport in Guam. Uh, 700. 708 nautical miles or so. We're on United Airlines Flight 192 in the Boeing 737-800. And we're just getting things set up. I have SLC, self-loading cargo, running in the background. We're also using GSX Pro. We're going to see how we can get those to work kind of together. Um, they're not optimized yet to work together, but we'll try to see what we can do. Um, let's see what's going on. The crew should be... All right, so we're expected, our expected takeoff, our departure is in, uh, is going to be at 625 local time um, in sim, in the sim. Uh, so that'll be about 725 uh, our time, so about half an hour. Uh, I can throw this up. Let's get that going. Uh, where's my display? There it is. So you can see here, self-loading cargo. Self-loading cargo, we'll put it right there. Got our flight information. You can see there's 118 passengers expected. 109 are checked in, so they're still checking in. Passenger boarding. Boarding's going to be in nine minutes. Uh, we're expected to start loading the aircraft um, in four minutes. That's going to be loading the cargo and stuff. And expected flight departure, 27 minutes. Hopefully this time we don't have any issues with our toilets, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's actually check that right now. You see our toilets are closed. But, I think that's because they are just closed right now. Because you can't use them until, obviously, doors open and everything, and we're ready to go. Uh, you can check right here. Ground not connected. Expected in approximately four minutes from now. The yeah, ground's not connected, so we haven't talked to them yet. 
A jetway is connected. Boarding expected in eight minutes. Check-in is underway. There we go. We got all that stuff. A few more passengers checking in. Boarding in eight minutes. Uh, things we can talk to. Intercom. We can talk. Again, I have it on automated mode, so it's all going to just be me clicking things or it doing it automatically. I could put it in voice mode where I can interact with my voice. I, have, I don't know what calls make yet, so... <laughs> We're not there yet. Just this is my only second time using self-loading cargo with the latest update, self-loading cargo 1.6, which just came out uh, end of July after three years. All right, now we're talking to ground crew. Not sure what's going on. I'm not hearing any voices now. All right. All right, give me a second here. I don't know why my voices have gone away. The whole point is to have your voices and stuff like that. I'm not sure why we're not getting that. Uh, we want to make sure everything's working. Maybe I'll just restart it, get everything going. Give me one second on that. We'll get some music pumping here for you guys. Every once in a while you get an issue like that, I guess. There we go. Suffling cargo start out like this. Airliner flight. Uh, we're gonna be doing the Boeing 737-800. Default dual class. We're using American Voices. Uh, we don't have any other sound packs right now, unfortunately. We'll import from Sim Brief. All of our information right there. We also want to set our takeoff time. It's 2200 Zulu in current simulator. So we're going to give ourselves a half hour. Uh, I was hoping to kind of get ahead, but now that we had to restart. So we'll take off at 2230. You see everything's green so like this that way we can start boarding or loading and everything start flight maybe it's because i'm outside the plane hi there we're fine there we go great we're just getting ready for departure, but if you need anything else, just give me a call. Thank you. No problem. Hi, Captain. Microphone check, please. Microphone check is five out of five. Okay, Captain. Radio check is complete. We'll contact you when we're ready to start loading. Roger. All right, let's start getting the plane set up. Oh, battery switch on. Yeah, let me get my, my battery switch on. Hydraulic pumps off, landing gear down in three green. Fault in off detection here. And we'll do the overheat fire test. Okay, extinguishers. If I can get my things to go the right way, there we go. And we'll do the cargo while we're down here. Yes, no. All right, so aircraft loading should be starting. Hello? Hello, Captain. Okay, I've spoken to security, and I'm told they'll be ready to send the passengers down to us in a few minutes. Thanks. Start fueling there. Ground to cockpit. Great. Is on its way. Remember to give me a call if you need anything. I'll speak Please to you later. The aircraft until the fuel Go ahead. And ask Hi, Captain. Ride. Just a quick update to let you know that we've started loading. We'll send the final load sheet up once we're ready. Roger. Hi there. We're now refueling the aircraft, and we'll let you know once it's completed. Roger. Boarding requested. Yeah, I don't know why this other fuel truck came, but it has. It likes to do that. 
Papa. Fuel truck is in position. Alright, let's get the APU going. Please don't load aircraft until the fuel truck arrives and ask to do it. Do you want to board crew? Actually, we should turn the ground power on first. To do before we try to do the APU. Passengers boarding started. Alright, so again, the GSX and what's going on here in uh, F SLC is not lined up because you can see it through the difference. Um, same with the passenger manifest, you can see no one's coming on yet. But get some visuals. And eventually, he is working on, I think, for the next update to have it that we see the passengers coming on linked up with SLC. Anyway, we. I'm gonna get this APU going. So we'll go over here, our two our ground services on this side. Uh, we'll release the lavatory and we'll release the fuel truck. Now let's get into our flight computer. Uh, we have until August 10th to switch that air rack. Initial position, we are coming out of Papa Tango Romeo Oscar. down, jump back up top, and set to nav. We go to our route page, origin, and we're going to P-Gum. Our destination, flight number 192. And let's get our flight clearance. We are planning on runway. 27. I don't know if we'll get any flight, flight clearance here. Nope. We don't have a tower at airport. The runway 27. And let's get the flight plan in. Alright, we're direct out to the VOR. Romeo, Oscar, Romeo. Right here. A Yankee Papa. This Yap. And direct to IDAS. IDAS. Activate, execute. Archer runway to seven. Execute, check those legs. I got for now. And we'll go to get our zero fuel weight. Our reserves. Point four. Cost index, 20. Three seven zero for our Hello? cruise. Hi, Captain. The passengers are ready to come on board. Are we okay to get started? Yes, you can start boarding if you're ready. Great, I'll let the rest of the crew know, and we'll... As you can see. Well, and whenever I go outside, that's why we can't hear things, because I have it. So, when you're outside the plane, you don't hear anything. All stations, we're about to start boarding. Yeah, actually, turn off this um, internal effect. Because even when we go outside on the sound of that, it just seems a little too loud, right? Not a big deal. You can also make it that it sounds like I have my uh, door closed, actually. But I want to hear it, be able to hear the talking passengers. Alright, we are doing. I believe 10,000 for our, um, 10,000 for our 5,500 actually. 
5,500 feet for the transition altitude. Esther should be coming on board. There we go. One person is on board. You can kind of see them coming on. We can also go over here to the manifest. Not the manifest, the uh, aircraft layout. And we can see the passengers going on one by one. Click on people here. We got first class Leandro Perez throwing his items overhead. You can see interaction with the uh, crew, uh, things he's thinking about. Luckily, he is not needing the toilet yet. Um, well, you can see where first class is getting on first, and then it'll fill in towards the back. Uh, today, our crew is Scarlett Brown, Lori Wong, Georgia Chen, and Hannah Laurent. Um, I'm guessing Georgia Chen might be the oh, senior flight attendant. Okay, it goes in order. Scarlett Brown's our senior flight attendant. Uh, you can see right now, toilets are still closed. Right up here, you have the kitchen. Uh, you got the galley. Galley over here as well. Pretty cool. Uh, we only have... We have our eight first class. We have uh, eight open seats. I'm going to have to change this. Lay maybe try to find a different layout. Because the PMDG plane only has one that I, I guess it doesn't really matter because it's just for uh, weights and balances. So you can see this layout. We can do all kinds of different layouts depending on the airline. Right now, this is the fault. All right. So let's get back into getting things set up. I'll check this. Uh, you can see our loading. 12 minutes remaining. Uh, fuel, we're a little bit lower because we have the APU on. Thought it was on. Eventually, it'll come on. Back in here. The N1 limit. I got my calculate calculation on the other screen. Uh, we're going to be doing a 24k D rate right there. Select that. Go to takeoff page. We got flaps five. Trim 4.95. Up right there. And then our speeds calculations, our, our sheet is giving us 134, 135, and 145. Uh, the plane itself is giving us just one extra knot, so we'll go with that. Yeah, actually, I forget. I always forget to put the runway wind first. That's why. Well, 260 at nine knots for our wind payoff speeds have to adjust that uh, now we got one three six all around and one four six all right so performance everything that is set departure arrival Climb, cruise, check out the legs. Passengers are loading. Obviously, GSX moves a little bit faster than. Actually, actually, it sounds a little quiet. Not that nice throw. <laughs> right? Doesn't it? Make it sound like we have a big door open right here. Alright, continuing on through our setup. And then our V2 speed. One forty six. Heading for runway two seven. Which is going to seventy degrees. And we'll go initial climb, uh, or put in our cruise, then we'll adjust accordingly. Once we get ATC, so 37,000. There, let's turn on our flight directors. We got the master on the captain's side, left seat, alarm the auto throttle as well. 
We do have our Q&H, 1009, set down there. Anti-skid, ejected takeoff. Adjust our lights. And our flight altitude 37,000, so we don't all die of pressure. And we do have the APU, so we'll go PAX Auto. Isolation valve remains. Leave open. Engine bleed, air on, APU bleed on. Air forward entry is open. Let's arm those emergency lights. Our flight control, spoiler covered, no lights. Alternate flaps covered, yaw damper on. Navigation normal, normal, normal. Plays auto and normal. External valve closed, lights are dim. Spar valve closed, lights are dim. Cross feed closed, valve open, lights should go off and fuel pumps pretty soon here. Turn the window heat on. Greens. Circulating fans and auto. Pressure differential, zero. Cabin pressure, zero. Our cabin climb rate is zero, I mean. Go auto on the seatbelt, so actually. Turn on the APU gen. Uh, there, generators. Logo light on. And now it's just a matter of waiting for our load sheet and all that. So today we're actually waiting on uh, the loading. Last time we were kind of delayed because we were waiting Ladies on the loading. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board this self-loading cargo service. Please place your large bags into the overhead locker wheels first. That's weird that it's playing outside though. I have that turned off, so it shouldn't be playing outside like that. These include laptops, handbags, duty-free and loose items of clothing. Once you have safely stowed your cabin bag, please take your seat. To help us ensure a prompt departure, we would kindly ask that you keep the aisle clear, enabling all remaining customers to board. Your seatbelt can now be fastened ready for departure. This is a no-smoking service. Thank you for observing this policy. Now, self-loading cargo, you can't use self-loading cargo there, um, if you're using time acceleration. Uh, it does, but it does keep track of the time. You don't lose any of that, right? Because everything's set based on your simulator time, if you have it set that way. Now, you can set it to go by your system time, which is real lifetime. So then, if you use uh, time acceleration, it'll kind of be wonky. Um... Even though when I was using time acceleration, every once in a while I would get call-outs from flight attendants, so that was kind of interesting. You can see all of our passengers. Uh, we got a lot of different uh, metrics we can look at. You can look at satisfaction. You can see most people are green. We got a few people uh, who are not. For example, right here, uh, we have his Esteban. Had flight right now. He's thirsty and hungry. Not enjoying the in-flight magazine. Um, is thirsty as well. So, like I said, hopefully we don't have any issues with the toilets. Last flight I did, two of the toilets were out of commission and no one used the available toilets. So they all had to go to the bathroom really bad once they got uh, in um, into here to Palo. Alright, we got 112 passengers on the board. So we're six more, waiting for six more to get in and get seated and secured. People's anxiety, everyone looks pretty decent there. Health. Uh, boredom. 
thirst. Everyone's a little bit thirsty. Everyone's, you know, a lot of people a little bit hungry. Got a few people getting close to me in the toilet. Got three percent of the three percent of people are drunk. Um, or not really drunk, just they're a little bit, a little bit of intoxication, uh, including Nieva's S bed. Hello. Hi there, Captain. All of the passengers are now on board. We're still waiting on the load sheet from ground. No problem. All right, so I'll we're just... bring it to you as soon as they send it up. All right, we're just you waiting for that load sheet. We got two minutes remaining on the loading. That should pass some of the time. Good morning from the cockpit. Well, at this point, this I could have done speaking. this by microphone. I'd like to welcome on my you own. on board this morning's flight. But I hope we'll you're have well. it do the automated. We're currently preparing for departure up here in the cockpit. And once we're airborne, we'll be climbing to our cruise level of 37,000 feet. We hope to depart very shortly. We're not expecting any delays. Once we push back from the stand, the cabin crew will start securing the cabin. As we head to the departure runway, please make sure you're seated and secured as they make their way around the aircraft. The weather is looking good, so it should be a nice, comfortable climb up to our cruise level. Once we're airborne, there shouldn't be any issue during our climb. It's a pretty straightforward departure out of the airport, so nothing to worry about there. The wind forecast during our cruise looks very favorable, so we expect to arrive on time at our destination, but we will of course keep you up to date should there be any changes. The ground crew have finished loading the aircraft, so if you could get yourself seated and secured, we'll be able to get going straight away. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the flight. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. Stand by for ground power disconnection. We're starting the APC. Okay, so I need to make sure I actually make these call outs. Um, and once I kind of get in the flow, then I'll try to do these call-outs more with, um, Roger. just me speaking. Because I know I got, I got dinged for some points, it, it rates you on communication and everything, and obviously starting the engines and everything. Um, and it would be much easier to just do it by voice now. But we'll see how it goes. And here we got, uh... Okay, cool. Go ahead. We're off the ground power, so feel free to disconnect. Roger. Stand by, please. Ground power has been disconnected. Roger. Ground to cockpit. Go ahead. Loading has been completed. We're sending the load sheet up to you now. We're waiting for you to close up. Once the beacon light is switched on, we'll contact you to begin pushback. Roger. So I think, yeah, okay, they have sent it. All right. I don't want the telephone. All right. Hello. Thank you. Okay, looks like we're all set to go whenever you're ready. Excellent, I'll instruct the crew that we're ready to remove the jetway and you can go ahead and close the doors. It was too fast. I'll make the call to remove the jetway and you can close the doors. No problem.
Cockpit to ground. Ground to cockpit. Hello, Captain. We're ready for pushback. Go ahead. Call me when you require pushback. We're all set. Feel free to get connected and start when ready. Marcher check completed. Bypass pin inserted. We're all set, so feel free to get connected and start when ready. Roger. Ground tow is connecting. Roger. So we'll see how this works if it actually, uh. I mean, I'm using GSX and we're using. Kind of trying to do both at the same time. All right. Before start checklist, flight deck door closed and locked. Fuel pumps on. Passenger signs auto. Windows locked. MCP V2 146. Heading to 70. Altitude 37,000. Takeoff speeds V1 136. V rotate VR 136. V2 146. Free flight completed. Rudder and aileron trim free and zero. Taxi and takeoff briefing completed. Anti collision light on. Go ahead. Sparking brakes. Go ahead. Just a reminder if you're using software to track your virtual airline flights, you might Please want to start it now if you haven't already. Roger. Ground to cockpit. Release sparking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tow is connected. Release parking brakes when ready to push back. Parking brake is off. I see. I'm to trying go. to figure out how Roger. to use these two Tow together. Tow is attached. Steering pin is inserted. Stand by while we start pushback. Okay, Captain. We're clear of the stand and you're free to start engines. Starting number two. Roger. Cabin crew, set doors to automatic and cross-check. Okay, starting engine two. Coming up to... five percent and switch to idle. We got the new panel on here. All right. Back properly. Why did I go this way? I just want I said push back to the... Uh, I don't know my right and left very well. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm bad at my lefts and rights. Waiting your confirmation for good engine start. The brake is on. Roger. Stand by. Please keep your parking brake on while we monitor engine start up and disconnect the tow. Pit to ground. Roger. A good engine start. You Ladies disconnect. and gentlemen, we now ask for your attention while we take you through the safety procedures on this aircraft. A safety card is in your seat pocket showing the exit routes, oxygen masks, life jackets and brace position, which you must adopt if you hear brace. Brace. There are two emergency exits at the rear, four in the middle and two at the front of the cabin. Floor lighting will guide Starting you to number one. Roger. Please be aware that your nearest exit may be behind you. In an emergency, leave all cabin baggage on board. Your seatbelt is fastened, adjusted, Unlocking and released here. as shown. It must be fastened when the seatbelt signs are on, and we recommend that you keep it fastened at all times. If the air supply fails, masks will drop from above you. Pull a mask towards you to yeah, start. Yeah, push back the wrong way. I should have pushed back right. I don't know why I thought left. I always get my rights and left and screwed up there. Put on your right. own mask before helping others. If you land on Left water, take the life right jacket from under your seat. Put it over your head. Pass the tapes around your waist, click together and pull the strap to adjust. 
do not inflate it inside the aircraft. When outside, inflate by pulling the toggle. If it fails to inflate or needs topping up, blow into the tube. Okay, Captain. Looks like there a good start up on all engines. The tow is disconnected. Nose wheel is free, so you're good to go. We'll get ourselves disconnected now, so have a safe flight. Look out for the pin on the left, and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Pin on the left, and we'll see you again soon. All right, so we got good engine starts, continuous, generator one and two on, axe auto, APU bleed off, generator one, power selected, APU off, runway to turn off lights and taxi lights on, pit hot, probes on. We're ready for taxi. Might have to start checklist generators on, probe heat on, anti ice off, isolation valve auto, engine start switches continuous, recall checked, auto brake, RTO, flight controls checked, ground equipment clear, taxi lights on, runway turn off lights as required, and on, transponder set and standby. Gotta make a hard right away. How's it going? We're just in the middle of securing the cabin for takeoff. Okay, no problem. I'll let you get back to the passengers. Thanks very much. Alright, landing lights on, strobe position, and strobe is steady, radar on, and decas. Yeah. Atara. Entering runway. On runway 9, we gotta go all the way down and turn around. 7,200 feet for the runway. Go on runway 27, heading to 70. Thanks a lot. I'll get the crew seated and secured as soon as you give us the word. I will. Cabin crew, seats for takeoff, please. Yeah, so the whole pushback uh, area is a little hectic. Um, gonna kind of look and see how we can make that a little bit better. Because, um, well, I'm gonna have to do one where I just try to do pushback with no GSX and see how that works. Um, I think the problem is that you don't get a pushback tug. And yeah, we might have got ding dinged again for being a little fast on our taxi. Passengers don't like that when you're going too fast on the ground.
Alright, auto throttle armed. Engine start selectors continuous. Landing lights on, strobe lights on, transponder, Tara weather radar on. Before takeoff checklist, flaps. Have our flaps. Have for takeoff, shouldn't we? Flaps five. Left side, green light, stabilizer trim, 4.95 units. Port takeoff checklist complete. Take off. You're up. Laps one. Laps up. Cabin crew, you're free to resume duties. Standard pressure. Autopilot A set. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your seatbelts fastened while the seatbelt sign is on. We recommend that you keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you are seated. Toilets are located at each end of the cabin. Remember that smoking is not permitted at any time. This includes e-cigarettes. In just a few moments we'll commence our in-flight service, offering you the chance to purchase from our selection of fresh food available today. All details can be found in your in-flight brochure. You can also purchase a selection of... I love it when there's clouds. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. It just gives you that that 3D element. It's insane.
gentlemen, the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign, which means you are free to move around the cabin. However, you are reminded that for your safety we do recommend that you remain seated with your belt fastened at all times in case of turbulence or any other potential incident that could occur during the flight. Thank you. All right, so we are above 10,000 feet and pull back up stuff on cargo. So as you can see, we got three active toilets. We got someone in a toilet right there, uh, Oscar Molina. <laughs> but it's still great. I can actually, we actually have three toilets working. Hopefully we're not messed up. You can see a few people are getting uh, attending passengers where they were. Um, and we can go through, you can kind of see who, who needs attention, who's sleeping, for example. Um, yeah, right there. <laughs> Using Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi should be back on now. Again, I have most things automated, so that way I don't forget because uh, you can use this screen right here and... I have everything automated, but we could have this manual where I close the toilets when we're um, on on approach and ready to land or on takeoff. Uh, same with the Wi-Fi. Right now, you can see we got the Wi-Fi. We got pretty decent bandwidth, the effective bandwidth. 38 connections, 13 downloads, all that stuff. Pretty cool. It's uh, managed by the cabin crew, which kind of makes sense. Uh, lighting, you can change the lighting as well. I believe on this screen it. Depending on how you have the lighting, it should kind of change. Um, go over here. Let's see if I can do that. So, uh, oh, you see how that lighting changed? That's pretty cool. They're way up if you want. I see. See the emergency lights on the ground? That's pretty cool. Oh, we'll put that back to auto. Why? Why? Oh, I thought, like, what's going on with the toilets? Uh, it looks like we have people in the toilets. Okay. Okay, so that means the toilet's in use. Okay. Oh, did you just hear that? <laughs> April Monkey, hey, how are you doing? Long time no see. <laughs> just checking out uh, self-loading cargo, the update. I just heard the toilet flush there because uh, the person just left that toilet. The last flight, we had two toilets down. They were out of service. Um, and the whole and no one wanted to use the one available toilet. See that toilet's being used now. That's pretty cool. Uh, we, can, we can close down the toilets. If I didn't have this on automated, I could close the toilet. Yeah. We can shut this toilet off, close it, can't use it, turn it back on. No. We don't need to punish the passengers. Uh, and then the same with the Wi-Fi. We can just go right here, turn off Wi-Fi service, and piss everyone off. The 47 people are now probably pissed off. Like, uh, where'd my Wi-Fi go? Does x -Plane, does x -Plane 12 have the 350? A350? Cool. Yeah, there's another, um... Uh, I forget her name. But she, she just... I, she was just been going through her 757, 767 type rating for, uh... I don't know which airline. I don't think she said what airline, but, uh... 41 years old, and now with the Major. Uh, with... With the airline I hopefully she'll be with for the rest of her career until she's uh, forced into retirement. And yeah, she finally got a simulator that, you know, instead of having to just use the, uh, what do you guys call it, the, the paper, the paper tiger or whatever, <laughs> he's able to do it in the sim. And I'm thinking, it's like, but Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't have a 757, 767, so I wonder if there is an X Plane 12. And it looks like she was using, I, I think I saw on her video she was using X Plane, which. I would say is a little bit more, I mean, it's, it's a little bit more of a simulator, obviously. But I think as far as flows, as far as you're doing your flows, I mean, 
as long as you have a proper study, you know, properly modeled, uh, whichever plane, you just need to get the right one. And she didn't look like she was in prepared 3D, but I was like, where is he, where, where are you finding a 757 to, uh, to do your flows? Because I would assume the 757, 767 has a different cockpit than the 747. I mean, they look similar, so I don't know if that was what was going on there. Um, definitely not a 737 cockpit. You were you were in the A320, yeah? So you're just going Airbus, you're staying in the Airbus, you're just going to the bigger one now. Pretty cool. So you're doing... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty, I mean... I would say the CRJ is all right. The Aerosoft CRJ is all right. I mean, as far as being modeled, I don't know, you know, the flight. You can just hear those toilets going. <laughs> if you, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear it. I can hear that toilet flush going. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, basically, yeah, they're my two favorite. Uh, I don't have the Phoenix um, just because I spent too much on these two PMDG planes, 700 and the 800. Uh, but it looks the Phoenix. I've heard really good things about the Phoenix. It's really cool. They're coming out with uh, the 319 and the 321 as well coming out soon. But I'm in super budget saving mode right now as much as I can because I want to build up a nice emergency fund uh, for the family. Uh, I've got twenty thousand dollars, twenty one thousand dollars or so set aside right now. I'm hoping to get up to about thirty something thousand by, uh, by hopefully April, May, spring next year, because I want to, I haven't, I haven't locked it in yet, but I, my plan is to go to ATP flight school and, you know, knock out those ratings, seven, eight months, go a flight instructor and get going on being a real life airline pilot. So, uh, kind of, I'm just kind of tired of picking the wheels here, spinning the wheels, uh, where I'm at. I mean, I'm in a job where I'm going to make as much as I'm making now for... I, I can't see myself doing it for the next 30 years and just breaking down and having bad knees and barely being able to make ends meet as I am. I want to do something different. <laughs> Ooh, they asked if you want to get on the 787. Well, the three, the, the 350s... Right, the 787 and the 350 are kind of the the equivalent, yeah, or, I mean, they're the ones competing for that part of the market, right, that market share. I want to get on a DC. DC Cal? What's a DC Cal? What's a DC Cal? Ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know, we will be starting our in-flight drink service in a few moments. If you could please clear all aisles and ensure that any oh, bags are placed call. in the overhead lockers, it would be most appreciated. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be going pretty soon. I'm going to be uh, doing a little time acceleration here and probably stepping away to make some breakfast. Unfortunately, I try to get, I'm just able to get these a flight in quick early in the morning before my wife and baby, wife and, I don't know if he's a baby anymore, but over, what, 19, 20 months old now, so he's running all over the place, but yeah, they're going to be getting up soon and get ready, get all that ready, so I'll try to knock this flight out as quickly as possible. Headed up to Guam. Giving me the bars. Uh, no, I'm living in Milwaukee, so on the Great Lakes, Midwest. You just hear those toilets going back there. 
which was something that was not going on on the last flight because everyone needed a toilet and no one was using the toilet. Now they're they're going all hardcore on it. I can't remember who it was. Um, uh, Icebird here on Twitter. He he suggested um, that I use the uh, lavatory uh, truck here in PMDG. Oh, we can't actually go to it. But you have the lavatory truck and the cleaning truck. and so I made sure to have the lavatory truck hook up as we we're getting ready. I don't know if that has... It, it likely doesn't have any effect on self-loading cargo, but considering we had two out-of-service toilets the entire flight, and I think it was like a three, three-and-a-half-hour flight from uh, Port Moresby up to Palau last flight, and we only had one available toilet, and no one seemed to want to use the one available toilet. Uh, self laid cargo. The the passengers. It was it was kind of sketchy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to serve our hot drinks menu. Please make sure your tray table is in the down position and clear any items from the aisle. Thank you. So not a ton of time left on this flight. We're already down to about an hour twenty to go. But I'll probably use a little bit of time acceleration get us to that descent and then we can get back into that high workload part of the flight. Went to Miami three weeks ago on the uh, Lufthansa 747. Uh, real life? I'm assuming that's real life. Yes. That, that actually could have been a fun trip. Uh, you're en route to Buenos Aires right now. There should be an event at 2300 Zulu. Uh, now I'm wondering if you're talking about in this case. Now you're talking about them. You got to kind of tell me because I know you're <laughs> real life. You know, People tell me, it's like, oh, I'm headed there. And it's like, well, real life or in the sim? As I know, we're all simming here. And Cool. Here. Where are you flying? Buenos Aires. So what, are you, what are you flying in the sim and to Buenos Aires? And where are you flying from? And are you in the A350? Are you simming the A350 right now? In X-Plane. I just saw one, I saw a picture on VATSIM, someone posted on the VATSIM Facebook, uh, praising, saying the X-Plane clouds are, look like the best clouds. I, I don't know, I don't have X-Plane 12 to compare. Uh, from Paris, that's going to be a nice flight. A350. Yeah, that's kind of, I guess when, when I have a little bit more, you know, right now, like I said, I'm in budget mode, but yeah, in the future, I probably, probably get, I'll probably have Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane and just kind of bounce back and forth depending on the plane I want to use, or especially, you know, going into a type rating, it's like, okay, well, X-Plane has the plane I'm trying to type rate on, whereas Flight Simulator doesn't, and I think, I like I said, it's like, I've, I've always thought, it's like, this would be such a great tool you, know, you have the, the the paper tiger so-called right you know the the paper prints out to do your flows but it's like i think this is a really good thing to have kind of do your flows right because you can everything's modeled and it's more in a 3d kind of above down just and to be you know kind of be able to toggle stuff even though again you're not getting that physical thing unless you have a home cockpit and unless you're well into your uh, airline career. Uh, it's a little bit expensive to build a cockpit. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I don't... Why would you say it's... I mean, I mean, why... Like, what what, what's, what makes it different than a uh, flight simulator now? Because I do, I do know that 
when we first got into Microsoft Flight Simulator, what, three years ago now? X-Plane 11 was still the best to go for airliners because we didn't have really much op many options for the airliners. We only had... I mean, I guess when you're saying long haul, you're saying long haul like Paris to Buenos Aires. Yeah, because if you have the A350 over there. Now, is the A350 come stock or is that like from... I don't know. Is that a purchase? But yeah. Yeah, if you're talking that, I mean, the only... I, I want to say... We have over here probably the best best long haul plane is going to be the Kuro 787-8. The mod for the 787-10 that makes it the 8 and actually makes it a little bit more decent. But even then, there's still a lot of stuff that isn't modeled. Yeah, the 787 and the 747 are, are still have a leave a lot to, leave a lot to be desired. Like I said, Kuro, there, uh, there's the Kuro 788 right now, uh, which is a little bit of an improvement over the 787-10, no but yeah, there's still a little bit all aisles are clear not perfect, are or, in the but it's so a lot be better. Thank you. How does this climb? Our climb is much slower than before. What did they call over to do? Wonder if I should tell make I mean everyone's seated. To be honest. Um, I'm looking at uh wondering if I should uh turn the seatbelt signs on. I'm probably gonna turn the seatbelt signs on just to help out the cabin crew because they're gonna be doing a food service. That way everyone's in their seats. I'm uh, not trying to jump around. Yeah, I did a flight. I did a flight in Japan. And yeah, there's it's like I said, it's it's better than the heavy division upgrade for the 10, but the flight so far. Uh yeah, it's still very light in the pants. <laughs> We're expecting the to arrive on time as planned. Progress is going very well. I'll leave you now in the capable hands of our fantastic flight crew, and you'll hear from me again when we're about to start our descent. Thanks very much. I think, yeah, Phoenix is really good. MBG, pretty good. Um, I haven't done the Phoenix, but I, it, it's pretty from what I've seen. I, I still like the fly-by-wire. I mean, I use the fly-by-wire for the A320, but again, that's just because I'm cheap and... Um, Obviously, if I flew the A320 like you do, <laughs> I'd probably go for the Phoenix uh, because obviously a lot more uh, in depth, I would assume. Even though, again, the fly by wire, they put a lot into it, and uh, considering how much is available to do, even with just that free upgrade, is amazing. blows me away about getting those type ratings you're getting your uh what would you say the a350 type rating is like how long that is you're, you're holed up in a hotel room i mean you're away from home for what a month at least for that training that's that's kind of the crazy part <laughs> but i suppose i mean at, at one t at, at, at once that seemed that's so intimidating but then at the other on the other hand, it's like, you know that you've, I mean, you've just lived and breathed that plane for a month or two, whatever, however long that training goes. Like, yeah, you know that thing inside and out, and you know all the, it, it, it is, you know, maybe not second nature yet because it's just the training phase, but, but it's as close as you can get, I think, because... Oh man, you're that's you're so lucky there. Yeah, you're in Frankfurt. There you go, or you're in that. You know, yeah. If you're only 20 minutes away, now there you go. That that's not, probably not as bad. But I know for me, it's like no matter where I go, I mean, unless 
course I move you know, depending on where but like I think United I think United Airlines which we're flying right now they do their training I believe in Denver that's where their training is um, obviously Southwest I think is I was saying obviously but I, I think Southwest is somewhere in Texas American I'm probably guessing is in Texas somewhere for training but yeah so if you don't live there well you're kind of just you're in a hotel you're living in a hotel for a month or two away from your family which is kind of hard but <laughs> it is yeah that that is true I mean even if you lived on the other you know even if you lived in like Berlin I mean, I, I would, you could probably, what, hop on the train. Yeah, you could hop on the train to Frankfurt or Munich and, you know, living in Berlin even and be there, what, in an hour or two? So if you wanted to do that commute every day, which, <laughs> granted, in America, there are people that do a three, four hour commute to work and then three, four hours home every day in their car. And I can't, I can't understand it. I can't even understand that. I'm even thinking, like right now I live, I literally walk to work 10 minutes right now. Oh, a train, I mean, how long would a train be? Maybe a couple hours? I think Germany is, yeah. I mean, Germany's, I always, I always want to say Germany's like the size of Wisconsin where I live, but it's actually probably more the size of Montana, which is a little bit bigger, but again, not that big compared to the whole U.S. or to all of China where I lived also. Oh, it's kind of like one of those where, but yeah, it, it, it blows me away because I, I walk to work 10 minutes and I have coworkers who they drive in two hours to work. Wait, why? Really, you're driving two hours in and then two hours home. You work a 12-hour shift, so you literally get home. You sleep if you want to sleep eight hours. You're hitting the bed. I I can't get it. Yeah, anywhere within Germany within 10 hours. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I think back to when I was driving over the road trucking. It was, I mean, 10 hours. You know, one we could drive 11 hours in a day. That was what we were limited to, 11 hours in a day. 11 hours, I could go from here in Wisconsin, I could get to the Ohio border, uh, the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania. Or I could get from you know, here in Wisconsin down to close to probably Memphis area, you know, Tennessee, along Mississippi. New York to LA would probably, I would say, at probably 30 hours. By car, I would guess. Well, Google and see. Uh, I want direction. Go New York. New York, New York, New York City. And we'll go to Los Angeles. I don't know if this is counting traffic. 41 hours without traffic if you took uh, Interstate 80, which would take you through Chicago, uh, through Nebraska, Denver. I mean, that'd be a great, once you get over to Colorado, 80 is a beautiful, beautiful scenic route. Then you dip down to Las Vegas and Los Angeles. So uh, 41 hours, 42 hours if you go down a little bit, 41. Basically every route is 41, but that's without traffic. Now, Getting out of New York, you're gonna have a ton of traffic. Uh, Pennsylvania is not too bad, Sorry to bother you, Captain. but you'll hit Cleveland and maybe have some traffic. Oh, uh, yes. Chicago, you'll definitely have traffic. Of course, just give me a couple of minutes and <laughs> I'll bring there. it to you. Uh, probably be fine. I mean, Denver, I don't know how bad that would be getting through traffic. Las Vegas, you'll probably have some traffic once you get on Interstate 15, and then obviously getting into LA, you'll have all that traffic on the 210 and everything. Well, 41 hours, but that's without traffic. So, of course, with train, New York to <laughs> New York to Los Angeles is three days. So you don't really save anything by going by train. And you gotta, and really you're taking, 
that train? Actually, it's not even train, it's just transit. So you're actually taking bus, because we don't have trains, because we suck. Uh, by airplane, what is it? Probably five, five, between five to seven hours, depending on what you do. Hello. Hi, Captain. Your drinks are ready. They're in the storage compartment in our galley. Thanks a lot. No oh, yeah. Problem. Road trip? Definitely. I mean, and that's the thing. I think, um... I comment on this stuff all the time because I live here in the city. I literally, I, I walk to work every day. I would love to be able to just not have to drive anywhere. Now, obviously, if I go become an airline pilot, I'm going to have to drive to the airport because I don't live next to the airport. Um, and likely, if I want to stay living in Milwaukee and hopefully get based in, let's say, Chicago for United. I mean, I think all the major airlines have a base in Chicago at O'Hare. Um, except for Southwest, Southwest Airlines is in at Midway, but again, you know, it's probably a two-hour drive, so I'm within range where I can, I can do my um, reserves. I can sit at home if it's a short reserve, you know, Ladies short call reserve, two-hour reserve. I can sit at home and get there in time. Menu. Please make sure your trade barring is in massive the down traffic and clear any items we'll see. from the aisle. Thank you. <laughs> but, but yeah, otherwise. I'm gonna we're gonna do a little time acceleration here. We'll go to four times speed. I think I think uh let's see uh it's about an hour and a half. Two oh here. What they give me? Hour and twelve minutes without traffic. So, with traffic, hour and a half to two hours. So, so not bad. Um, and and that's currently where we live. I mean, I I think if if I were to be based in Chicago, we might maybe I would move. You know, maybe move to maybe at least the south side of Milwaukee. So I'm not because right now I'm kind of right in the middle of Milwaukee. I do run into a lot of traffic going through downtown and all that, possibly, depending on the time of day. No, but if I live like more on the south side, kind of in the suburbs more, kind of avoid that. Yeah, an hour and 12 minutes, not bad. But, but again, I, I walk to work every day. Yeah, get a nice penthouse. Well, yeah, once I have money, right? I know one guy I watch, he, you know, he probably shares in a, shares a place with a couple other pilots at least. And he's with United now and he takes them, he takes the Metro in, he takes the subway, he takes the L into O'Hare every day. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> take the heli, <laughs> take the heli to the airport. <laughs> but yeah, it's, but that's my big thing. I, I comment a lot because I don't bike, I haven't been able to bike a lot here, but you know, I used to bike all the time in China when I had time, and I would love to bike here. Um, but a big thing is I, I love to follow the channel, like not just bikes, and a number of these channels are talking about how can we make America, and North America really, like Canada and America, US, have this problem that we have bad city design, right? We don't have good public transit. We don't have good train, a good train system anymore. We are, we are car-centric. Everything's about the car. And so it sucks. You can't walk anywhere. You can't ride your bike anywhere. And so I comment on these things and people are like, oh, you know, it's all about, you need to have a car. I need to have a car to get to work. It's like, yeah, I know you need to have a car to get to work because you live two hours away because we live in a sprawled out area. It's not, and most people say, oh, the United States is too big uh, to have public transit and bike everywhere and stuff. It's like, no, it's, cities you build cities that way it doesn't matter how big your country is in the u.s yeah in the u.s you can't go anywhere without a car traveling again that's what i'm talking that so there's a difference right 99 percent. you know most people most of the time they're using their car they're only going they're only driving within five ten minutes of their house right or they're, they're the drive is like a five or ten minute drive right which which you could replace by a biking or again building a city that's more walkable or public transit and stuff now and that's a difference too there's a difference between commuting driving commuting to work 
and driving for travel, dra driving for fun, right? I like driving when we go on a road trip because you're going somewhere and you're, you're stopping and you're seeing things, but that's a trip, right? Whereas driving to go to work, you're, you're, and most of the time you're just sitting in traffic trying to get to work. Where you know, or to go to the grocery store, which is, you know, thirty minutes down, you know, thirty minutes away for some reason, as opposed to being within walking distance. So, I mean, how do you travel in Germany? How do you travel in in, in Europe? You know, train, uh, subways, uh, by plane if you're going really far. Yeah, but I've never, like, I'll, I'll comment on these things and you have the people who are like, oh, you want to take my car away? I'm like, I, I don't want to take anyone's car away. I just want to make it that I don't have to own a car to live, right? Like, I don't want to have to have a car. You know, if I want to go on a road trip and I want to do a driving trip, I will rent a car, right? And we rent a car that's appropriate for doing a road trip, appropriate for what we want to do. You know, in America, you have people driving around big, giant Ford F-150s, big, giant pickup trucks that seat four people, maybe. And you have no store. I mean, despite the fact that you have this big flatbed behind you, it's not really that big. You don't have a ton of storage space, and it gets rained on unless you have a tarp. So, I mean, it makes more sense to have a minivan or a station wagon if you need to. <laughs> but, oh, well, it's cool. But, yeah, but you get two miles per gallon of gas. So you're spending a ton on gas. And then you have to fight for parking because you're trying to park this big giant thing. And, but that's America. Really, trains are always delayed. Yeah, and that's that's and and there's the thing. It's like if you have a system that is working, it seems like Germany. There's for some reason I don't know what's going on. I, even though I would say the German train system, even with the delays, is way better than the. I mean, we again. In America, there just is no... The trains... I mean, it costs an arm and a leg to take the train. And then, yeah, it's, it's delayed. It's very infrequent. You know, and again, I'm, and usually... And when I'm talking about this, I'm typically talking, you know, just like your city commuting. It's like so many people are like, Oh, I can't, I can't rely on the train or the bus system to get to work. It's like, well, yeah, you can't in the U.S. Because you have a bus that comes every half hour or every 15 minutes. And if you miss it, now you're, now you're late. Whereas in a country where they have a good bus system or a good transit system, you have a, a train shows up every four minutes, or a bus hits that stop every two minutes. Hello. Hello. I was just wondering if you were hungry. I'll get you something to eat if you like. No, thank you. No problem. Captain always says he doesn't want Do something to eat. Do give me a call if you change your mind, though. But that's the big thing is, you know, even in Germany, yeah, traveling between cities, you take a car, but traveling, you don't have to have a car to drive everywhere within a city, right? In the U.S., you need to have a car just to live. And people are like, well, you know, and it's always the thing. It's like, oh, you just want to have free handouts. It's like, no, I, I think I shouldn't, it, there shouldn't be this barrier to entry to be able to get a job. Like to get a job in the U.S., you need to show your employer you have a car. If you don't have a car, they're less likely to hire you because you're not going to be as reliable getting to work because most employers, I mean, it's, most bosses have no idea that there even is a bus system in a lot of cities. Or you're applying to a job that just isn't anywhere near a transit system. And so let's say you're, you know, and we, we're, we're in a mess here in the U.S. and probably everywhere, but I, I live here in the U.S. It's like you have... You know, you're a young person, you're any age, it doesn't matter. If you don't own your own home and you're on top of your mortgage and, you know, again, at the way the housing prices are going, you're paying a ton, at least with the, with having a mortgage and doing that, you're at least uh, putting money into something as opposed to uh, rent. But rent is like, you know, for a decent place, a decent apartment where that's not a tiny hovel, even where I live, which is Milwaukee, we're not a super expensive city. It's like $1,500 a month. A lot of people are only making $1,500 a month. You know, unless you're working a really good job, unless you're working something, I mean, but a lot of people are working in the service industry. Okay, you're making 2,000 bucks, now you're paying 1,500 for rent. 
now you have to have a car. And unless you pay in cash, which means you were able to save up at some point, uh, you have a car payment, which is going to be 500 bucks. Now you have no money for anything else. You don't have money to put any gas in the, in the, in the vehicle, which you need simply to get to work to make money. All right, let's turn that time acceleration off because we're coming to the end of our flight plan and we should uh, put in our arrival. Let's see, we are... What the heck? I didn't... I want to check this. No. All right. Uh, arrival, we're looking at six left. We haven't gotten any uh, ATC call. <laughs> 3,000. Yeah, see what I mean? Uh, and again, you're making more money as a as a pilot, of course, than someone working at McDonald's. And the refrain is always, oh, get a better job. It's like, okay, but again, you need to, you still need to get a car and all that other stuff. Makes it pretty difficult. United Link 902, radar contact. Maintain flight level 370. Maintain flight level 370, United 192. United 902, fly heading 060. Fly heading 060, United 192. Continuity. Heading zero six zero. Yeah, so many people, they're like, you you mention, and again, I'm, I'm talking about making cities, uh, giving people options in within the cities, right? I, I, I look at a place like Amsterdam where they're doing a really good job of that, where they're bringing in more biking and bringing in more pedestrian areas and have a good transit system where you can park your car or not have to use your car to live in a city. Again, I understand if you don't live in the city, you're going to, depending on your transit situation, and again, this is where we build suburban transit. This is where, you know, I live, I live, I don't live in the downtown of Milwaukee. I live kind of on the, I'm, you know, we're kind of the first suburb or we're the, the out, the, the, you know, what was originally a suburb of Milwaukee. We're no longer a suburb really, but where I live, we used to, there used to be a streetcar. There used to be trolleys, and you know they, we they used to be called streetcar suburbs, right? Where you were on a transit line, and so to get downtown, to get to where things were going on, get to your job that might have been closer downtown or whatever, you hopped on the trolley, you hopped on the transit system. We don't have that anymore. We have buses, which is a modern version. Again, buses are much more flexible than a, a fixed rail of course, because you can change routes when you need to, if there's road work, whatever it is. The problem with uh, most bus systems in America and in the world is that they operate on the same exact road in the same exact lanes as the car traffic, and so they get stuck in traffic. And so why, if I have a car, why would I spend a dollar or two for a trip on the bus make any sense if I could just take my car for quote unquote free even though you do have the cost of having to buy a car, have insurance pay for fuel, uh, pay the registration fee every year that people never think about and if you actually figure it out you probably spend more on the car than the bus but because you already have a car again I, I go through this all the time, I already have a car I already pay all that stuff so it makes more sense for me to use it than to take the bus but 
if you make the bus more efficient, right, it's quicker for me to take the bus to get to my job than it is for me to drive in traffic because the bus has a dedicated lane, now people are going to use the bus. If you start normalizing bus use and you make it <laughs> useful for people and not just make it the poor person's option. But you try to explain that to people and they just lose their mind. They're like, you want to take my car? I'm like, I don't want to take your car. I want to make it that people don't have to have a car. Like you say, if you say that, I, it's amazing how I'll get in just these Facebook, just these massive debates on Facebook where it's like, there'll be a post on some, you know, urban planning page or a bike page or whatever. It's like, uh, the post was, I think it said, we should design cities or where a person does not need a car to live in a city. You know, I have to go find it, but it's like, basically it's like a person should not need to have a car in a city to feel like they're not being deprived, right? Like, and, and you'll see people saying, it's like, well, no one's saying you have to have a car. It's like, yeah, but you didn't read the whole thing. I should be able to live in a city without a car and not feel deprived, not have to, you know, yeah, you can live without a car in a city. A lot of people do. But guess what? They have to stand out in the rain because we don't have bus shelters for bus stops. Um, they have to walk and, you know, they have to walk a long distance between transit stops to get to wherever they need to go because we don't have a real robust transit system. Uh, they have to, it's very difficult for them to get where they need to get to without a car because we build for the car. We don't build for people at a human scale, we build for the car. And so they feel deprived, they're being deprived. If you don't have a car, you're deprived. So the point is, you should be able to live without a car and not feel deprived, right? You should be able to just hop on the transit system and, and in some ways feel even better because you don't have a car, you don't have to worry about parking, you don't have to worry about if you go out to a party and you get a little tipsy worrying about how you're gonna get home. You hop on the transit system. But people, people are like they they think it's mutually exclusive. It's like, well, if we have a good transit system for all these freeloaders, then where am I going to drive my car? It's like you'll drive your car where you already drive your car. Maybe you won't have as many lanes to drive your car because we'll take some of those lanes away to slow you down, to make it make more sense for you to take public transit, or to make it safer for people to walk and bike. But you know, we live in a society. We have to have a give and take. It's not all about you alone. Everyone has to have a shot, right? All right, let's slow this down again. All right, so we just got, we're expecting Unaz Arnav Yankee approach. Runway 24 right. Okay, let's see if that matches up with the Medar. Check that first. I think uh, the ATC is actually a little bit better now where they will adjust. And, and yes, it is. 2-4 is going to make more sense than what we were planned on, so that's good. Actually, I reported ready we for descent. I'm not ready for descent ready for yet. Descent. i got to get in here and change things. United 992, descend 3000, QNH1007. Oh, interesting. They clear us right down to our... Descend 3000, United <laughs> All the way down. It's nice of them. All right, we'll get down to 3,000. We'll let the plane take it. We're in BNAV. 3,000 in. Okay, so they want us to go uh, RNAV Yankee approach for runway 24 right. I guess that's because there is no ILS for it. Okay, so RNAV Yankee 24 right. Uh, Uniform November Zulu. Transition there. Execute. I'm going to get dinged here because I didn't tell the... Uh, Trying to get the, uh... Hi, Captain. 
Why can't I tell them I'm descending? Why is it 10 minutes until descent? No, it's right now we're descending. Just to let you know, there's around 10 minutes to go until we start descending. In that case, we'll do a final drink service. Some of the passengers are pretty thirsty. Okay. No problem. Actually, it's not. We don't even have a descent anymore. What the heck? The VNAV is not giving us any descent, which is weird. But well, we'll give them some time for that descent. Good morning once again from the cockpit. I hope you're enjoying the flight so far. We'll be starting our descent in just a few minutes. The arrival weather forecast is looking good, so it should be a nice easy approach into the airport. We're not expecting any delays, so we should be able to land fairly quickly. Once we do begin descending, please listen carefully to the cabin crew and pay special attention to their instructions and also the seatbelt sign which I will be illuminating before landing. Thanks very much for flying with us, and I'll speak to you again shortly. Hello, Captain. I'm gonna throw off that seatbelt sign for a little while. There? Let them... People who need to go to the toilet, run to the toilet. Forgot that I had that on. If you need anything more, just give me a call. gentlemen we are about to serve our hot drinks menu please make sure your tray table is in the down position and clear any items from the aisle thank you all right so at a uh, uniform november zulu which is the vor for uh, guam there on uh, nimitz we need to be at there now it's starting to descend Fix in. Good morning, once again from the cockpit. As you may have noticed, we've begun our descent. Depending on the destination air traffic, we should be landing in around 20 minutes. In the meantime, I will be instructing the cabin crew to get the cabin ready for our arrival. Once that happens, the seatbelt sign will be illuminated and you will be required to stay seated and secured until after landing. If you need to visit the toilet, it may be worth making your way towards one now. You'll next hear from me after landing, so I will wish you a very good morning once again, and I'll speak to you in a short while. Now let's take a look at our arrival here. Starts. Guam, Arnav, Yankee, runway 24 right. Our final approach course is going to be 243. We'll punch that in 
right here. Good morning, Bell. Welcome in. Hope you're having a good morning. We're just beginning our descent into Guam. Getting our final information in for our approach. 243 degrees is our final. Minimum altitude at uh, PAV V is 2300. LNAV minimum decision altitude is 1160, height 55, air runway elevation, airport 305. Uh, so 1160 for our minimum. All right, 1160 set. Uh, airport elevation 305, so we'll jump up here. Get that in. 300, good. Uh, missed approach, we're gonna climb 3000 direct to Abale and hold. Uh, altitude is set in inches, altimeters, so we'll change that. Inches, uh, transition level is 18,000. I always, I always lose where that is. Eighteen thousand for the transition altitude. We're going into U.S. territory. I got the map view. We're gonna fly into Nimitz one one five point eight. Then we'll go out, turn around to Waybox to our final forty B uh, course. At uh, or at Waybox, we're gonna start descending to twenty three hundred to Pavy. 2300 and then we'll go on a three degree glide slope in the runway at 24 right right and go around 3000 feet direct to obali right there there's the hold once we're landed runway 24 right we're gonna be looking to exit if we can, Echo, but probably going to be exiting Delta or Charlie. Then we'll come back on Kilo, the terminal. Get that VOR in there, 115.8 Nimitz. Mm -hmm. like a drink tea coffee or water no thank you no problem give me a call if you change your mind
So let's bring up uh, Duffel and Car again. I'm looking. I'm sitting here on Oliver Taylor. It's pretty cool. He's he's wondering about the seatbelt sign. He's hearing that roaring noise from. He's like, are the flaps out? What's that noise? Uh, see, satisfaction is okay, except for uh, right here. We have his estimate, but he's always been a little grumpy. Wishes they were landing sooner. Um, we do have a toilet situation here, unfortunately, but can't really do much about that. Uh, luckily, hunger is a little bit. Everyone's pretty good. Thirst levels, except for uh, Mr. Olaf Skins. Skins. Even though he did get a Coke seven minutes ago, so it's a very thirsty dude. Got a couple people still sleeping. A lot of people jumping on the Wi-Fi, which is going to be going off once we get on our final. Uh, what I really like, probably my favorite part of this, uh, which makes it helpful when I'm using time acceleration, is that this keeps track of our exact same time when we boarded, when we got off the blocks, so how long we taxied, our takeoff our flight time, our landing, and all that stuff. So now I can keep track of this and put it in my spreadsheet. It's a lot easier. I don't have to remember, oh, did I catch the time when I landed? Yeah, no, it's going to be right there. Really cool. Um, it's really nice because it tracks your flight based on the simulation time, if you choose that. I mean, you can obviously choose, have it uh, choose um, by the by your system time, which would be a little bit different. But yeah, we do have the uh, speed brakes out there. Let's put our... That noise is. Going up our transition level. And our transition altitude going to give us to it. Calculations has given us uh, flaps 30, 141 knots for our V ref.
Cabin crew, please prepare the cabin for arrival. Ladies and gentlemen, we will shortly be landing. Please ensure your cabin bag is safely stowed with your laptop inside. Your tray table must be stowed, armrest down and window blind open. You now need to be seated with your seatbelt fastened ready for landing. Please help us by handing in any rubbish, newspapers or magazines that you do not want to take with you. The toilets are no longer in service. Thank you. See the runways right there. We're gonna go all the way to the other side, come in, runway two four right. And our speed down, let's get the practical landing lights out. I don't know why the VNAV wants, to make, wants me to go over 250 knots uh, under 10,000, so I'm gonna get dinged for that. That's all loading cargo. Well, that's why I turned auto throttle off for now. Well, Rate Airfield.
below. Hi, Captain. The cabin is secured for landing. Thanks. If you let me know when you're ready to land, I'll make sure the rest of the crew are seated and ready. You can take your seats now. We're almost ready. No problem. All stations, seats for landing, please. Hit here with some turbulence, man. It looks like we're going into a hold. We'll go into that, but then we'll just kind of come out and make that nice teardrop. That's why I'm keeping that in there for now. That's one. That's two.
That's five. Don't be confused, that airport is not uh, Antonio Juan, that's the Anderson Air Force Base. I wanted that teardrop to go extended and come back. That's why I had that hold on, but I think I took it off when I was, and it just accepted it without me uh, really executing it. <laughs> That's 10. That's 15. Any gear down. Three green landing gear. That's thirty. We're on final track. United 192 established on final track. Got a lot of uh, United wind bouncing us Continue around. Approach. Continue approach. United 192. Airspeed low. Airspeed low. United 192. Contact Agonia Tower. 118.1. 118.1. United 192. Agonia Tower, United 192, on final, 2 foot right. United 192, wind, 290 degrees at 5 knots, cleared to land, 2 foot right. Cleared to land, 2 foot right. The most right. turbulent uh, approach I've had in a long time, and we only got 5 knot wind. I'm getting all kinds of bad warnings and uh oh, wow. Oh, what is going on here? I'm wondering if the weather here it, it seems the US always had like US areas always have like the weather's kind of weird out. It always seems like there's super high winds even if there aren't in real life. Yeah, so I got a ton of like warnings going through on the flight information on self and cargo so I'm sure a lot of that's gonna ding us like excessive G's and stuff it's like I I'm literally just on autopilot there's not much I can do hey we're at the minimums continue pretty stable stable
100. 50. 30. 20. 10. United Link 902, wind vacated. Contact ground 121 decimal 9. That was very good. Wind vacated. Contact ground 121 decimal 9. United 192. First is deployed. We're at Delta. Oh, why the music gets so loud on electronic devices for messaging, calls, or internet access. Close that door. So loud. United 192, taxi to gate 14 via Delta Kilo. Taxi to gate 14 via Delta Kilo. United 192. All right, Delta Kilo, eight fort. Yes, that's going here. How are things going? We're just keeping an eye on things until we get to the gate. Okay, thank you. I'll speak an annoying to you in captain. A <laughs> thank you. All right, so not a lot of planes here. Only this one plane taken off. Uh, when I took the screenshot for this airport, they had all the nice planes lined up. It was really cool. But I guess we just got this one United. Where the heck is this follow me car? And why are you running onto the active runway?
He's like, that's gate 14 over there. All the stuff is set up. I don't know. Why is our marshaller not over here, though? A virtual marshaller. Parking brake set. Few generators on. Bleed on. Few generator. Start switches off. Taxi lights off. Cut off. Five out of five. Roger. Okay, Captain. Ground power is available. Stand by. We'll start getting you offloaded in a couple of minutes. Roger. Ground power available. Passengers, the boarding starting. Cabin crew, the aircraft is secure. The jetway is connecting. Start deboarding once ready. All right, so we see the passengers all lined up, waiting to get off the plane. Door is open yet. Might be an issue because we don't have the jetway working, so we're gonna go. Have the cabin crew do it. I think I might be able to open the doors here. Let's try it. Finish up this flight properly. Door is open. There we go. Let's see the passengers starting to come out. They are. They actually come out really quick. Nice to be on time. Right, so you can already see right there we have a uh, negative 256 feet per minute good landing a little bit firm but again we had that wind and turbulence all over so uh, let's pull up Volanta and see what it's got to say a look at the flight that flight path right there at the end not the best teardrop first person to arrive here today and yeah negative 271 flight time says 100 uh, an hour 22 we did use um did use time acceleration, so the real sim flight time uh, was an hour and 55 minutes, a block time of 2 hours and 11 minutes. That matches up right here, what we got. See, we got a uh, flight time 115 minutes, which is an hour and 55. We're really cool there. A few people getting hungry, everyone's getting off board, we'll get the cleaning process going that away and we'll bring up the world tour map there everywhere everywhere we've been on the world tour so far and today the reveal Guam hi Guam I should hello hi captain all of the packages have been offloaded 
Thanks. Give me a call if you need anything else. All right, next flight, we're going to be flying down to Ground the Marshall call. Islands. Go ahead. Which are right over there. Are we flying out? And I believe we are flying from the Marshall Islands. I think we're flying over to Opene. I might be mistaken, but... There you go. Getting a little loud here with the cleaning. Well, there's Guam. Uh, let's get back in here. Deboard crew now. We're good. And you can see we got our, our rating. Whoops. Got our rating for the uh, flight. Good flight. Passenger rating. Uh, pilot rating 1610 out of 1950 points. Got a B. Reasonable landing, on time arrival. Let's view the flight report, the full flight report. Alright. United 192. And I don't know where these times come from. It always ends up being like uh, times there. Uh, but you can see all these are green. That means good. We got a great flight for the passenger rating 50 out of 50. Passenger satisfaction, on time departure, arrival. Uh, yeah, max climb, get a little bit of ding, max descent, a little bit, not green there. And then we have that G-force, the minimum G-force. Uh, yeah, negative G-force is well out of limits, and that was probably, again, that turbulence going on. Uh, ground speed on the taxi. A good landing, so we got 50 out of 100. Uh, everything else looks green. Again, cr cabin crew not seated during takeoff, so they're just taking way too long to get ready, I guess. A uh, reasonably accurate descent notification. Oh, we didn't, uh... Ended within 15 minutes of time. Yeah, I don't know. Still working on that, all the little call-outs. And then inaccurate weather announcements during arrival. Oh, yeah, well... I didn't... I, I don't know how you do... How you change this and how they judge that because if I do it by voice and I, I I don't know so but pretty cool stuff there this one's gonna be some of these are gonna be interesting especially this weather one like will it know if I get the accurate weather and how do I know I mean again that's a big thing with Microsoft Flight Simulator unless you're using you know set weather it, you might have the meta and it says one thing and then the weather is a little bit different all right so pretty cool right there you see 118 passengers four cabin crew all this really cool um, kind of uh, tracking as well right there. we got to be on this flight. Not bad. Uh, all things considered. You can see four minutes remaining to unload. And you can hear there's some cleaning going on. Unfortunately, GSX and the jetway don't want to work or there's no jetway going on. But anyway, thank you for coming along on the flight. Next flight, like I said, is going to be over to the Marshall Islands. And that should be a good one. We're going to be on United once again. Um, and that will be tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, Monday morning, usual time. Uh, without much further ado, thank you for coming along. And until next time, happy flying and take care.